All right, guys, so up to now, networking has been pretty simple. I mean, whenever we want to make a simple home network, all we do is you buy some modem, buy a router, take all of our computers and start plugging them into the router, and we need to give them a unique ID number so we can identify each one. So for the unique IP addresses, we'll give this one one, two, three, boom. Look at that, home network taken care of. Now that's great, simple enough, but the problem comes whenever you try to get on the internet. Because what if this guy over here, what if he also signed his computer as the ID one, two, three? Well, whenever you guys, I don't know, like go to some website and request some information and it tries to send it back, uh, th no, 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 this way, uh, th no, th this one or th look at this. You see this diagram? It's horrible. So that's the first problem that we have the IP address that you have is actually broken up into two parts and the reason for this is because the internet is not one big network the internet is a network of networks I'm gonna say that one more time the internet is a network of networks so we have one network over here this is you know some college and this is just some apartment and this might be an entire country that just got internet for the first time all of these networks are connected together and somehow they gotta figure out a way to work together so whenever this website right here gets a request to send data I don't know maybe some images to one of these computers it needs to know two pieces of information first what network am I supposed to send it to this one this one or this one and then the second piece of information is once it gets to that network what device am I supposed to send it to that one that one that one that one that one that one so the network ID I'll write these down network ID and the host ID so if you can read my handwriting that's the two pieces of information that we need whenever we're trying to send or receive data what network you belong to and what is your host ID what is your individual computers identification or IP address so way back when whenever they're first designing the IP addressing system what they did I don't know what they were doing probably rollerblading around and smoking weed and doing the disco whatever the heck they did back then they were looking at this thing and thought okay we have 32 bits to work with and we need to break this up in such a way where part of it is for the network and part of it can be used to identify the host so how are we going to do this? Well, one brilliant guy probably took a puff on his low joint and was like, you know what, man? Why don't we just split it right down the center? This part of the IP address can be for the network, and this part can be for the host. Now, whenever we have 8 plus 8 bits, that's 16 bits. And if we do 2 to the 16, remember that little math trick I told you earlier on? That means that we can have 65,000. 536 different networks. That also means, actually write down networks. That also means that we can have 65,536 different hosts on each network. So this is how many different networks you can have and each of those can have this many computers connected to it. But then another guy was like, you know what? I don't know, probably rollerbladed around some more. He's like, I've been thinking what if a network wants to join that only has 500 computers 500 hosts well that means that 65,000 would be wasted so if a small network joined you would have all these IP addresses that would go to waste now another guy who just walked in he probably came in from Woodstock who knows he's like oh I got it why don't we just split it right here so we have more networks but less hosts and then the other guy was like, eh, yeah, but what if we have a big network and they need more computers? And you know what? There's a huge fight, and I'm pretty sure that's how one of the wars started. I'm not a history buff, but I'm almost certain that is. So, you know, you can quote me in your scholarly papers if you want to. But we need a way to dynamically change the number or the size of networks that can connect to the Internet. So how do we do this, and how do we keep all these people from wanting to fight each other? Well, choosing an arbitrary number, such as just say, okay, I'm going to split it here, or I'm going to split it here, or I'm going to split it here, that's not a good idea. You never want a fixed number. 
So in the next video, I'm going to show you the solution they came up with and how IP addressing saved the world.